So welcome everyone um, to the seminar, to the Sydney CPPC seminar. So today's speaker is Chen Liu from the University of Minnesota. Chen obtained his PhD in 2015 uh, from Pittsburgh University. Uh, his supervisor was Tao Han. And after that, he moved on uh, to Fermilab for postdoc and then to Maryland. Um, and since 2021, he's a faculty member at University of Minnesota. Um, Chen has been working a lot on collider physics, and today he will be telling us about unique physics at muon colliders. So please, over to you. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Michael, for the kind introduction and uh, uh, invitation for this seminar. Uh, it's very exciting for me to uh, uh, you know, reach out to our colleagues uh, enjoying summer right now uh, while I'm suffering Minnesota winter uh, uh, to talk about the unique physics at the Muon Colliders. Um, I, I, for the first time, I visited uh, Australia this summer. Uh, in my in my summer, by uh, your winter, I was very. It was very nice. I'm very impressed. I was very impressed. I hope to have some opportunities in the future uh, uh, to, uh, to see you in person and discuss physics. Okay. So today, I will try to talk about the unique physics at the muon colliders. And again, I would like to make the talk talk uh, uh, you know more interactive. So please. Uh, there's no need to raise hand, just directly unmute yourself and ask questions during my talk. Uh, it's a very exciting topic. Uh, I have a hard time to decide what to cover and what to not cover. Uh, so uh, uh, please uh, stop me at any moment if you have questions, okay? Uh, so uh, as you all know, we are in a very interesting time about colliders. There's a lot of future collider proposals, but also a lot of uh, nervousness and pessimism about future colliders, given the cost and uh, competition between different uh, proposals. But in general, I just like I would like to just remind everyone: there's a lot of options right now, and people there are all, many people working on different options, uh, such as the col circular collider E plus C minus machines in China, called CEPC, or circular uh, uh, E plus C minus and Zen PP machine at uh, 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 in Europe, uh, uh, FCC, as well as uh, Japan has ILC proposal. And also there's a lot of recent excitement about uh, future muon colliders. And there's also a secret hope, uh, open hope that the US community have that maybe we can build a collider in uh, uh, on the US soil. But at this point, it's really international muon collider uh, study groups. And the way try to understand uh, uh, and what's the physics uh, behind it. Um, so, uh, but as a physicist, we want to understand their physics potential. Here's one effort we made, uh, instead of showing you this uh, 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 cartoons and uh, uh, demographics, uh, 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 geologies. Uh, here's a function only for future lepton colliders. It's already very busy plot. Okay, so this is a plot I made for the snow mass process as a function of the central mass energy of the future lepton colliders. Uh, what's the required luminosity for you to reach some common physics goals, such as uh, having a certain number of Higgs bosons produced uh, like this, ten, a million Higgs produced, will require a certain level of luminosity or require a certain level of number of Z bosons, W pairs, or probing some scale of new physics. So those solid dash lines are basically what's the physics requirement on the luminosity. Okay. But what's, uh, there's no need to go into details of this, uh, uh, this uh, plot, but rather another thing you should be impressed about is there are many uh, dash lines, which are the future lepton collider proposals, and they are uh, targeted uh, mass and central mass energy and luminosities. We can see there are a lot of pro proposals and plays in, players in here. Standing out is this sign colored mono muon collider option, which has the highest energy rich and also really high luminosity uh, rich, which makes it a very interesting machine. Okay. Um, but uh, at this point, I instead of going forward into the detail of physics, I would like to step back uh, uh, one step. Uh, uh, one step. This is the plot produced about 10 years ago uh, in the previous snow mass process. Horizontal axis is the year of first physics of a given facility. The vertical axis is uh, constituent central mass energy. And there's, there's labels about the technology and the, the important physics discoveries in there. 
Okay, it should be familiar to everyone that the Higgs boson discovered at the LHC in 2012. It was uh, uh, done in LHC. But before that, uh, uh, if you go into history, we can see the forefront of technology and ambitions always leads to discoveries. And our fields are built upon such uh, an, an ambitious ex uh, 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 exploration. Another important thing I can now help notice is this circle. Even 10 years ago, okay, our vision for the 2030s and 2040s is the possibility of a future high energy muon collider at the field TeV level. Okay, you can the first thing we can draw uh, uh, realize is uh, uh, maybe there's up and down of so people's ambition for a future energy collider, but uh, we also cannot help notice this recent uh, uh, re uh, excitement about high energy muon collider. Okay, so the dream for high energy collider uh, persists in our field, and people's perspective oscillates and changes over time. And right now, there's a huge amount of excitement uh, call for future high energy muon collider from both CRA, uh, our CRA accelerator and the experimental community. And I think our job in particular as a theorist uh, is to uh, try to see what are the interesting as uh, aspects of physics that such a machine can, uh, can examine. And that drives me to give my talk today, focusing on the unique physics of muon colliders. Okay. So in this overall picture of muon collider, it actually have many different phases and possibilities. I can have a, a 125 Higgs factory, which I will spend two slides to mention that at the later part of my talk. And we can have a three TV muon collider, or even have a 10 TV or higher energy muon collider. Okay. And in particular, the, currently the most commonly accepted benchmarks for future energy muon collider is a 3 TeV phase and a 10 TeV phase. And we can even dream for high energies. Okay. But as physics, uh, physics discussions we should have is to understand what it can do for us. Okay. What is, what's exciting about, uh, about it? What's the physics deliverables they can have? So I would classify the physics, physics drivers for Henry muon colliders. It's really enabled in a lot of different phenol probes centered around dark matter, Higgs, and the uh, more new physics. Okay, I should pause here. It's a very personal classification based upon uh, uh, you know uh, uh, its unique physics. I want to discover today, discuss today. But I think it's a, so it should be very clear for ev everyone that uh, uh, it's a Colliders is a well-controlled uh, environment for particle physics that enables many discoveries in the history and a high energy muon collider will drive the new discovery. And uh, being a lepton collider, it will have low background, so it will be a very powerful machine. Okay. So the outline of my talk is the following. I will first discuss the dark matter. Okay. So it's, you will see the, the reason for the ordering uh, later on. Okay. So, it's a very simple and the direct motivation, okay? I would say WIMP dark matter at this point is still a compelling, simple, predictive explanation for thermal called dark matter, okay? We have evidence for, uh, we, are for we firmly believe in the particle nature of dark matter and to explain uh, where do they come from and why they are this amounts uh, in our universe, uh, WIMP provides a very nice uh, framework. And what's interesting about the, the WIMP dark matter is there's a scale associated with that from the perspective of unitarity, okay? This scale tells us that the WIMP dark matter cannot be too much higher than, ten, uh, 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 than a few tens of TeV, okay? That gave us a goal for the search and an uh, important target. And we want to explain, and uh, we want to explore what the Mion Collider can say about WIMP dark matter. So this drives, uh, drives our study on this uh, topic uh, 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 in the tw uh, 2020s, okay? So we work on the nightmare scenario to demonstrate the muon collider's p potential in uh, the wimp dark matter. This is called the minimal dark matter, which is a simple electric multiple it. Uh, they can be Dirac or Majorana, can have different uh, 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 electric, uh, uh, weak multiple it's. Okay. It's a nightmare scenario for a few reasons. First of all, the radical abundance, uh, the, uh, the, the mass of the dark matter to give us the correct radical abundance is really high. The thermal target can be as high as 27 TeV for seven plate to marijuana dark matter. 
And then its signature is minimal. It's, uh, it's a highly degenerate multiple, and uh, the collider signature will be nothing but the missing energy uh, in general. Okay. And also, it's an important nightmare scenario that the, the double case coincides with the pure hexeno case for uh, SUSY dark matter, and the triple case coincides with the pure vino uh, dark matter scenarios. So those are uh, uh, you know well motivated scenarios, and actually we find it's hard to cover them in uh, in, in current collider setups, uh, current experiments. So if we can cover them, it will show us the powerfulness of uh, muon colliders. Okay. And before I move on to the phenomenology, why I want to remind everyone, muon collider is also a vector boson fusion machine. When I collide two, a pair of muons at extremely high energy, the collinear emission of the quasi-real particles of W and Z and photons uh, will have really high probability. It has logarithmic enhancement. So you will see a typical process at a muon collider for standard model productions are actually quickly dominated by the vector boson fusion as a function of central mass energy of the muon colliders. For instance, TD bar process are highly dominated by the uh, vector boson fusion process. And uh, once the central mass energy goes beyond few TeV, the, uh, uh, the, the S channel process will become subdominant. Okay. And that impacts our consideration for this dark matter searches at the muon colliders. So the basic field consideration already requires a lot of non-trivial uh, 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 components. For instance, the minimal signature we we, provo uh, we invoke here is just uh, uh, um, missing energy. Okay? Uh, due to the uh, calculation of the mass splitting, production, and decays, etc. And the missing energy, missing transverse energy at the LHC now can be in, uh, uh, can be improved to a different observable. That is called missing mass. I, I want to emphasize uh, the reason we can use missing mass and muon collider is because we have precise control of the initial uh, uh, partonic central mass energy. Unlike the LHC, we don't know what's the event by event what's the fractional energy carried away by the uh, partons. Okay. So there's interplay between draw in S channel process versus the T, uh, VBF process. And also the initial photon radiation requires a special treatment that uh, requires a lot of hacks into the programs and generators. And also there's an interesting subtle uh, background induced by the beam because muon is an unstable particle, even in circulating in the uh, accelerator, it will decay in flight and generates background. But uh, so first of all, we focus on the missing mass signature that is this improved observable. The, uh, the simple and inclusive and hence also most conservative. And it will give us a lot of interesting channels such as model photon, VBF dimuon, and also mono muon signature, which are what I will highlight. And then we will also discuss the disappearing track signature. That's another exclusive channel. Uh, it's a challenging one, but has a important usage and the help in uh, help us to boost the sensitivity for muon collider sensitivity on uh, dark matters, wimp dark matters. Okay, so let's discuss uh, the few these few channels uh, one by one. First of all, not most naively and directly, if you think about the, how to search for dark matter at the colliders, we will look for monophoton and muon colliders, just like we do for monojet at the hydron colliders. But even for that, you will have very busy uh, considerations. As a function of the dark matter mass, this is a vertical one, it's a clear cross section. There are four class of diagrams contributing. The S channel draw in like process, the photon photon fusion process, the photon weak boson fusion process, and also the uh, you know the VB electric VBF process, all attach an, an ISR or FSR photon to uh, have to to be a spectator to help me tag this event. And with all those channels and all those electric multiple lead considerations, we have very busy production rate to consider. But let me simplify the story for you. Okay, let's focus on only on the seven, electric sample, the Majorana formula, or oh, sorry, Dirac formula. Okay, so they, this this time we can have uh, the channel or the S channel uh, draw in like process with the ISR photon that is in this solid red line. This is rather flat in cross section and uh, decreases only near the kinematic threshold for 14 TeV muon collider that we decide to choose a benchmark back then. 
Okay, and also you have uh, the photon fusion, photon weak photon fusion, weak photon fusion channels in those uh, in those shapes. Then they decrease as the mass goes higher and higher. As you know, you can you you you, you cannot let the weak boson carry too much fraction of the central mass, the energy of the initial muon. Okay, but you can still see at uh, low energies, low masses, the VBF process dominates, while at high masses, the S channel uh, drawing like process dominates. And interestingly, there's different decoupling and representation scaling. If uh, for the electrical amplitudes, uh, for dryer-like process, the scaling and hierarchy between different electric multiplets is like the following: n to the two or three power, okay, approximately. And for VPF process, the scaling as n to the four or five fifths power. So it ha has a bigger gap between those representations. Okay. On top of that. Of all those busy production, another important thing to know is the horizontal line that is the standard model background for the model photon signal, which are dominated by the T-channel W exchange with the ISR photon, as well as the diboson production with the invisible decay of the Z boson. Okay, so we can study them and generate them. But what's important, as I mentioned earlier, this time we can have a different handle. We will use the signature of missing mass. Okay. So missing mass is trying to subtract the four momentum, uh, three momentum, four momentum you measure the final state photon from the initial dimuon uh, uh, central mass energy uh, for a vector. Okay, you can then we calculate squared and calculate invariant mass of the system. So you can see the sharp features. The background are these green lines, which have two distinctive features. This continuum peaking at the high mass is the T-channel W. Uh, exchange that is, uh, you know, having soft uh, photon dominance. And this uh, low mass one is the gamma Z production with a Z decay to a pair of uh, uh, neutrinos, which should have a peak at the Z boson mass. But on, on the other hand, the dark matter themselves, I pair produce them, so they have a kinetic, uh, kin kinematic cutoff at uh, the two, twice the dark matter mass. So you have a sharp feature to help you separate the signal and the background. Then you can see uh, we can have the significance for different channels uh, uh, competing against this uh, continuum standard model background. And we can easily see the uh, uh, electric multiple lit with a fixed mass uh, to have high sensitivity. As a, a function of the mass, it, they can have high sensitivity for higher multiple lists and the below one sensitivity uh, significance for the uh, double and triple lists, which are of particular interest are the Higgs Zeno and Ovino scenarios. Okay, so another important thing I want to show here is it's important to have a systematic control. Here I vary the systematic by one uh, 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 per meal level. Uh, sub percent level, okay? And depend on, if I have 0.1% systematics, the significance will reduce by almost one order of magnitude for many cases. It, I, again, this is because my signal background ratio is about 10 to minus three, we need to have better systematic control. Otherwise our significance will be significantly reduced. But the good news is at laptop collider, systematic should be able to be controlled at this level uh, due to you know, the perturbative control of the system. But I still require both the serial experimental work on the precision control of the system. Uh, but beyond this uh, mono uh, photon channel, there's an interesting mono muon channel. When you hear mono muon, you should be worried. I have coming up, I start from a mu, mu plus mu minus fusion, which is a charge neutral state. How can I have a mono mu uh, a final state? Okay, this is a parent charge violation channel. What we want to show you is the signal do not suffer from this charge violation suppression, while the background will suffer from that. This is because when I try to produce the dark matter pairs, due to the fact that they are electric multiple, I can have a production of a charge component and the neutral component together. So I can have a charge one uh, production of this pair of electric uh, dark matter candidates. So charge is still conserved. However, the charge component will decay back to the neutral one. We are a soft pile that I don't observe. So hence, I have a charge, uh, a parent charge violation without any suppression for my signal. But for my background, I, it will, I will have to miss one of the charge particles, which I don't have soft pions generically in my final states. So the model muon channel have a signal that is non-suppressed 
in the VBF channel, while the background is suppressed. So the signal background ratio is much is uh, is much higher for this channel. And we will show it give you as a leading sensitivities for uh, the lower uh, representations, the Higgs and the Reno case. So are those prompt the case there? So uh, the, cha the, uh, the, the charged um, chi dark matter particle mm -hmm. would prompt the decay into the pion and the chi, or, or is it can it be long lived with the? Okay, that's a that's a very good question. It will go to the next slide, but here you will see uh, is uh, uh, it's uh, uh, they will essentially promptly decay. Uh, and but the, the next search channel will try to exploit if what if they are not uh, uh, promptly decay. Okay. okay, thanks. Uh, so that's exactly this slide, right? The 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 next possibility is uh, uh, instead of this inclusive missing energy and missing mass search, we can also look for this famous signature of the disappearing track which is essentially if I produce the charge component of the electric multiplet, it can decay to the neutral one or plus the soft pi. Okay? The question is, what's the lifetime of, the, of this particle? Whether it can travel a certain distance, register in my detector, and, uh, and be seen as a disappearing track, a track that uh, does not continue to, uh, to the further radius. So we propose this model photon plus distinct uh, disparate track signature as well, which we first studied at the muon collider. But before doing that, we first want to understand for those uh, many different uh, uh, charge assignment electric multiple it, what's their lifetime and what's happening to them. So I have charge one, charge two, charge three, charge four, charge five component, depending on representation, right? And they will decay back to the the one with fewer charge, uh, lesser charge uh, uh, immediately uh, uh, or with uh, some appreciable lifetime. What we can see is that the charged one will uh, decay to the immediate one with a smaller charge uh, with very extremely short lifetime. Okay, so essentially, no matter what electric multiple you have, all of the charge two uh, uh, and the above object will decay back to the uh, charge one. Uh, decay to the charge one, cascade to the charge one object uh, promptly with a lifetime less than the, you know, 10 to minus, uh, uh, less than a millimeter. However, the charge one decaying to the charge neutral one could have a somewhat long lifetime. And most famously, the Higgsino has a six millimeter lifetime and the Wino has six uh, centimeter lifetime. That's exactly uh, the case uh, we show here, okay? But it's again, sim quickly simplify our discussion. The electric multiple lit is essentially missing energy except for the charge one component. Uh, all we need to do is to study the charge one components, uh, the accumulative production of the charge one components and see if I can see the disappearing track signature. And there's a particular difficulty for muon collider that is it has the beam induced background. As I mentioned, the muon decay in flight and there'll be a lot of energy depositions in this detector. So what we propose is to study the disappearing track uh, signature with some minimal displacement. We, we, we require it hits the tracking layer at least twice. This is a high transverse momentum, uh, uh, very, very strict lines uh, in the uh, uh, tracking layers. And we, uh, with the current design, we assume at least the two hits can be measured at five centimeter, which is also at our study showed up in many other experimental studies and detector designs. They require uh, up, uh, five centimeters with two layers. Okay, we show that Depending on the minimal transverse di displacement, the Vino can have you know order one sensitive uh, efficiency, and the Higgsino can have order few percent sensitivity. Depending on, I require one displaced disparent track or double disparent track, and the, uh, we highlight the importance of uh, having inner layers close to the beam pipe as much as possible in order to capture such a disparent track signature. So with all of those channels, we can show the result. The result is as a function of the dark matter mass, they have a particular vertical lines called the thermal target, which means below which I will be under abandoned dark matter, above which I will be over abandoned if I rely on the minimal gauge coupling. Okay, so it's a very nice, the vertical red line would be a target for us to hit if, for a future collider if we want to test their WIMP dark matter hypothesis.
And we have many channels. We can have the VBF dimuon channel, mono muon channel, and the inclusive uh, 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 mono photon channel. The higher the reach, the better the, 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 the channel's sensitivity. We can see the mono photon channel is powerful for higher representations which the rate is larger and the more robust against the systematics. The monomion channel actually dominates all the lower representations because it's a high uh, signal background ratio uh, for the search. And the VBF dimion has some room to improve because we were being conservative on the rapidity coverage. If we show the disappearing track coverage, which I require model photon plus one disappearing track, you can see the coverage is much higher. Right, it's almost bring you to the kinematic limit of half the mass energy and show you the powerfulness of them. Okay, so basically, this streaming track is an important channel that can boost your sensitivity uh, greatly. Okay, so here's a summary. Uh, combining all the missing energy energy channels, uh, we can hit uh, a different thermal target at different uh, central mass energy of the muon collider. Essentially, the for lower representations, the uh, 14 TV, 10 TV or 14 TV muon collider would be su sufficient. And in particular, we would demand a 10 TV muon collider uh, to cover Reno and Hexenos. That is an important conclusion we draw and have been uh, consistently tested and verified by the experimental and other independent studies later on. Okay, and uh, uh, it's uh, it's an important uh, message. We can say muon collider is the WIMP discovery machine. Okay, and uh, also importantly, I want to mention there's co corresponding complementary probes of uh, electric precision, and also the, there's a unique role played by the colliders. Is that the collider will always provide definitive. Uh, def uh, a definitive measure for new particles, even if they are discovered first in direct detection experiments. Okay. Uh, so just uh, to show again the result in the complementary summary plot by the snow mass process in the BSM report. Here's the various different colliders. They are sensitivity to the hexeno. This is a vertical thermal target line. We can see uh, where the uh, uh, direct searches, which are this uh, blue uh, or uh, green colored ones, muon collider or Stan TV and, uh, and above muon collider or the FCCHH uh, uh, or SPPC, a uh, hard one colliders have a chance to cover them. All the other machines, unfortunately, wouldn't be able to reach this important uh, 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 and well-motivated uh, dark matter candidates. Okay. Uh, so I spent more time than I planned for this topic, but let me speed up a bit. Uh, but also, please, uh, again, stop me uh, for any questions you have. Okay. Uh, but this is just one example for dark matter. You can see already warm you up and give you a lot of feeling about the physics and the interplays of uh, unique considerations for muon collider. The next topic I want to discuss is the general new physics searches. Okay. It's a very important topic as we all no, in particular for those who work on BSM, we want to produce those heavy particles, new physics and probe them, right? Uh, so there's an infinite space of possible new physics channels. So how can I cover that? I will just show you one example, again, to highlight some unique unique features of muon collider, okay? So let me choose the neutrino example. Neutrino is a puzzling sector. Uh, in standard model, neutrino is massless. Well, we have we know it is massive. We need to have a mechanism to give their masses. Typically, we invoke a seesaw me mechanism. Okay, and let's choose to work in a simple scenario. And there's a heavy neutral laptop, heavy neutrino that mixes with ours and gives a, a, a lighter mass. You can view it uh, in the generic inverse seesaw mechanism or a general three flavored uh, 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 linear seesaw mechanism. Uh, but generally, so phenomenology is determined by the mass of the heavy neutral lepta and the mixing with the standard model uh, neutrinos, right? So if I ask you, uh, what uh, is it, can you muon collider play any special roles in such a scenario? Uh, you may give me, you may, uh, you may say, why do I expect so? Okay, so let's take a look. Okay. So the first of all, the physics you should realize is quite rich. The direct particle probes from production can have meson decay, heavy lepton decay, onshore offshore gauge, Higgs boson decays. For, and for the decay of this heavy neutral lepton, it can be short-lived or long-lived. We have cosmological probes and astrophysics probes. We also have indirect constraints on oscillations, et cetera. 
Right? But at the muon collider, at physics, uh, particle physics facility, uh, there are some very standard considerations. Okay, so I can do mu plus mu minus fusion to a, a s channel uh, uh, s through an s channel process produce a pair of neutrinos where one neutrino mix with the heavy neutral lepton and actually give directly production of uh, the heavy neutral lepton. So it's a associate, it's a pair of production of a heavy neutral lepton and the, the standard model neutrino. And the process, let me remind everyone, is the S channel. So it's one or S uh, uh, suppressed, which means if I have a 10 TV muon collider, the cross section will be lower. If I have a three TV muon collider, this cross section will be higher. Okay, so 10 TV muon collider, of course, can reach higher due to kinematic limit, but generally it's a uh, uh, it's a fundal bar level cross section, and the flatness of the rate uh, remain flat up to the kinematic threshold with uh, new. Uh, uh, Sorry, threshold of uh, around the neutrino mass around uh, the central mass energy. Okay, so there's no over two here. Okay, but unique one is the mu flatter one. If the high neutral lepton have any mixing with the new mu flavor neutrino, another powerful channel will uh, will appear. That is this T channel W exchange. Okay, so I, again, I do a pair production of neutrinos, but this one with a heavy neutrino with a heavy fl a muon flavored, so that enables direct production. And this rate is a five orders magnitude larger than the previous one, okay? which tells you muon collider do have a unique uh, unique uh, feature in the muon flavored the heavy neutral leptons. The rate is five times larger. And that enables us to think about the uh, you know, signal and background. With a signal, let's consider a fully reconstructable heavy neutral lepton decay into a pair of jets plus a muon. And uh, 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 let's ignore all the other channels, although we can use them to improve our sensitivity. And uh, we can focus on this fully reconstructed channel for simplicity. Okay. But also, there's a lot of subtle discussions about the background. In fact, we encounter various uh, singularities that need to be regulated properly uh, uh, due to uh, uh, different reasons, collinear emissions, uh, effective photon approximation, and the fake pole induced by uh, uh, electric PDF treatment, etc. But we discuss those backgrounds one by one and study them carefully. And that uh, with such a study, we were able to derive this uh, and uh, simulate the signal in the background properly and study them. Okay, for instance, for the muon flavored the heavy neutral lepton, the missing PT uh, signature, missing PT of the system, which is for this uh, heavy neutral lepton plus neutrino production, we are basically asking what's the PT of the neutrino that we don't detect. For muon flavor, it's peaked at the low PT as we anticipate. Uh, it's uh, the T channel enhancement. Where the T channel enhancement come from? Right, and for the S channel E and the tau flavor, we have high PT. That is the S channel production, which really don't favor the forward direction. So we can see uh, there's quite different kinematics, and we actually have many different kinematics for the signal and the background, depending on the mass, depending on the background composition, etc. So we have uh, a cut flow analysis trying to single out the uh, the heavy neutral lepton in in the, both scenarios. Let me just, uh, uh, and you can do a cut flow analysis uh, requiring uh, the central detection and the reconstruction of the hydronic W and the heavy neutral lepton and have a sliding window of the inverted mass cut for the heavy neutral lepton. And that can help us reject different background uh, 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 with uh, those minimal requirements and the kinematic cast that enable us to get the projected sensitivity, a unique one by the muon collider. The horizontal axis is the heavy neutral lepton mass. The vertical axis is the mixing angle square. Okay, so I show the full results, which are the muon, uh, the the heavy neutral lepton in the E flavor and tau flavor alone. That your coverage is around generically around ten to the minus two to ten to the minus three for three TV or ten TV muon collider. But for muon flavor one, at three TV you can cover uh, the orange line and 10 TV, you can cover this red line. It's very interesting and impressive first to note that uh, we can cover the mix angle square up to 10 to the minus seven for the TV scale heavy neutral leptons. Okay. And then, interestingly, the 10 TV collider is, is very uh, performed uh, worse in this region. That is really because the VBF process starts to dominance and these backgrounds uh, are larger there. 
So why shouldn't they do a different study of the production and decay and tagging uh, for uh, high energy leptons in this region? Okay. Uh, so this is a very uh, 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 unique pro sensitivity to the TEV scale having neutral leptons, but let's put it into perspective of other future colliders. Okay, so here for the muon flavor, the muon collider covers 10 to minus 5 to 10 to minus 7, as I showed in the previous plot. Here are the various projections Hydro Mu RC projection, FCC HH projection, RC EC projection, etc. And also ILC projection. You can see that. Muon Collider is uniquely, powerfully covers the TV scale realm of having neutral leptons that no one else can cover, okay? And this is due to this unique channel, unique feature of uh, T-channel enhancement. And uh, 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 so, uh, so, so this is uh, uh, interesting, uh, having neutral lepton physics, just to highlight uh, its feature in uh, general BSM physics. I should have mentioned that uh, electric precision can also prove the mixing angle universally up to 10 to minus three. And also there's a unitarity cut, uh, depending on your model that is around uh, this corner, which is up to the right, we don't, we don't see here. So with our study, uh, around the same time, there's two P BDT, both the decision tree based st phenol study as well uh, by those groups. And they also show consistent results. As I showed you earlier, they are uh, featuring slightly different the context of the study, fully mixed uh, having neutral leptons or, 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 or others, et cetera. Okay, uh, but the, the results are consistent and we're really happy. Our, our more analytic and uh, numerics based uh, study instead of detector based study show this uh, consistent results. But let's put back to this uh, normally seen you uh, having neutral lifetime per parameter space. This is a zoom out plot. Instead of focusing on the TV rail where I show the muon collider have a unique coverage. Okay. Here is a very busy future projection for having neutral leptons. You can see it's a forefront of uh, BSM uh, uh, coverages. It's a uh, universal benchmark for people's study. Future, hydro, future high energy colliders, uh, 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 electric precision machines, as well as a beam dump experiment and forward uh, facilities. Okay. Any region around this line and above, I would say well motivated in the uh, in the seesaw uh, mechanism uh, class of series. Okay. So what we have shown and studied is this region uh, and show the muon collider is unique. What we could study and uh, should uh, uh, it's well motivated uh, is, uh, is this WZ Higgs production or, and in the displaced vortex region, and also the meson decay production of the heavy neutral leptons uh, uh, regime. Okay. So I'm running out of time. I will not uh, uh, say too much about uh, further invest, uh, invest, uh, uh, studies. For instance, one also need to explain the smallness of the parameters in the, even in this inverse seesaw mechanism. One can motivate them by doing a partial composite neutrino and invoke interesting uh, neutrino shower behaviors in the, uh, that it can be studied at the colliders that I will skip. So I would like to attribute the last, uh, uh, 10, 20, uh, 15 minutes of my time on the Higgs physics. Okay. Uh, uh, I, um, so at this point, I, uh, you should be either be surprised uh, uh, or I, you should be confused why I talk about Higgs last. There's two real angles. One way say Higgs is important physics. I should have talked about Higgs first. The other class of uh, thought may be, why do you talk about Higgs? Muon Collider as a energy machine is not a powerful Higgs factory. It's not even on the list of Higgs fact factory considerations. Why do you talk about it? So I will show you why, okay? And that's why I chose it last because it's actually complex and I want to uh, you know, have time to discuss the various aspects uh, here uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, depending on the time and the uh, details I can go into, okay? This is already 11 years after discovery. Let's say, what do we know about the Higgs? Okay, this is, again, a summary plot of motivation about Higgs physics uh, uh, for the SNOMAS Higgs report. What we can learn is that after 10 years, Higgs is still the central player of many puzzles in nature. Naturalness, uh, origin of electric symmetry breaking, whether it's composite, uh, origin of masses, et cetera. 
when we realize that we need to go deeper and more precise in the understanding of the Higgs. That's why we universally recommend a Higgs factory to be the next step for a future collider. Okay. In that regard, any future collider need to have its Higgs potential well understood. Okay. Uh, from a different perspective, 10 years ago, what, what we did was we only measured a few channels at the RC, and we only see the Higgs coupling to two channels at 20% level or 30% level of accuracy. Right? But today, we measure so many channels and so deep in the cross-section uh, uh, plane for many standard model process. And in fact, we improved our understanding of Higgs coupling precision in this abstractly de de defined quantity called kappa to the level of 7 to 34%, 37% level. Okay? So basically, after 10 years, we have an understanding of Higgs coupling to most particles at around 10%. And our future projections by both that and CMS is that we are hopeful that we'll arrive at 5% level of Higgs coupling precision, or 3% for some certain cases, okay? So we, we have a much better understanding of the Higgs. We can say now the Higgs boson looks more or less like Higgs at 10% uh, level, okay? But uh, I would argue here now, and also solve one of the puzzles you may have. So why do we talk about Higgs factories and the Higgs width measurements so much when we talk about future colliders? Okay? Because measurement needs to be interpreted. So any process we measure at the collider to reconstruct the Higgs uh, for the hard scattering, the core part everyone here knows how to calculate, can be parameterized. Uh, as the production vortex and decay vortex divided by the narrow total width, right? This is a famous zero waste approximation. Higgs being an extremely narrow particle make this parameterization works very well. And here is a definition of the mysterious kappa in, in any plot you see. Kappa is the Higgs coupling to a given state divided by its corresponding standard model value. And that's why the, the rate for any process that reconstruct the Higgs is proportional to the initial coupling what has squared, final decay what has squared divided by the total width. Okay. Our channel can be parameterized this way uh, with a few, very few exceptions. I'm happy to discuss them. Simple extension possible for more channels than observables. But you should realize at this point immediately that there's an important consequence of uh, all of our measurements. That is, if I can, I can arbitrarily scale up the Higgs coupling to any state, so long as I scale up the total weights in this corresponding manner, uh, the observe the Higgs cross and cross section rate will not change. Okay. In other words, we cannot measure Higgs coupling strength without some inputs to br break this flat direction in the global fit uh, process. So in uh, so in reflection, the previous plot you see on Higgs precision actually has an important input you want to make assumption one made that is the Higgs width is not a free parameter. They assume there's no exotic decay. Okay. So without such an assumption, I cannot determine the overall Higgs coupling. And that's why Higgs coupling and uh, the app, the scale of Higgs coupling is unknown at this point. Okay. What we measure and what we determine is a ratio of his, uh, the couplings to various states. So you can see it's reflecting this plot that I, I made for the Muon Collider Forum report. Okay, uh, it's a various Higgs couplings. So vertical axis is a relative precision. You can see per mean level, percent level, ten percent level. What you should really focus on, let's say the red Higgs Halumi LHC. Look at the the, the shaded the the, the the light shaded region. Okay, you can see the precision goes up to twenty percent and above. In fact, the fit is unbounded due to the existence of such a flat direction. Okay. Only after I made the assumption that Higgs width is not a free parameter, it's bounded uh, to be uh, to be BS rate to be zero or coupling to be bounded to be smaller than one, I can close the fit and give you this solid bar, arrow bar of the Higgs precision determination at the colliders. And that is exactly the assumption made in the previous plots, okay? So that's why, in other words, that's why Higgs width and coupling determination is such an important topic for any future colliders. We want to be able to close this flight direction and to determine the overall scale of Higgs couplings to any objects instead of just knowing their ratios. 
And here is a plot for the 3 TV and 10 TV muon collider. You see the arrow bars goes to the roof. It also implies if I don't make additional theory assumption on no BSM decay ways, I cannot bound the fit. I cannot uh, uh, determine his coupling strengths uh, uh, um, precisely without assumption. So which means the hydrogen muon collider seems to be handicapped in Higgs measurement. It's similar to the hadron colliders. Okay, with the exception of uh, when I combine it with 125 GeV muon collider. Here, I want to share with you my recent uh, study that is uh, uh, about to appear on archive uh, to how to break, solve this problem at the high energy muon collider. Okay, but before doing that, let's just take a look at the basics. And I want to remind you about the future collider landscape. Glue glue fusion is the dominant channel at the at the RHC. In fact, at the high domain RHC, we'll have about 150 million Higgs produced. And the other future colliders like ILC, CPC, FCCE, is only going to have one to four million Higgs produced. Uh, mu plus mu minus collider can have a resonant production of the Higgs if I change the central mass energy to be at 125 GeV. It will only have you know, 0.3 million Higgs produced. Well, for a future energy muon collider, I can have uh, about 10 million Higgs produced, okay? None of them can compete with the Halumi RHC. However, we still call other future colliders a Higgs factory. What's the reason? That is really because high energy uh, uh, PP machine has lots of background. The lifetime collider have clean background. So they have very clean Higgs. Every Higgs produced will be on tape. And that makes them a powerful Higgs machine and more precise than the RC in many channels. Okay, but on the other hand, you can also realize the muon collider dominant production is a fusion process like the gluon fusion process, which also suffers the uh, unknown central mass energy and etc. We'll have large background. We have a lot of VBM background, so it may not be a clean uh, Higgs factory. That's why some of you should be surprised why I think hundred muon collider can be a powerful Higgs uh, factory. Okay, uh, I I um. I don't think I have enough time, but uh, let me emphasize. Uh, the muon collider has an interesting feature of resonant Higgs production. Okay? If I fuse the, the muons at 125 GeV, I can do the resonant Higgs production. It sounds simple, but actually very subtle. There's a, a lot of uh, subtleties about uh, how good the beam control I should have, what's the ISR effect, beam energy resolution effect, et cetera. It took me many years to finalize this result. I have some final words about what they can do at the, at the given uh, beam property. Okay. So I don't have time, but I will say I can scan the central mass energy around the Higgs mass and do a resonance scan of the rate. The blue one is the regular resonance. What I measure is the red dots in the rate counting experiments. I have to do a scan of the central mass energy to map out the Higgs landscape. That will enable me to extract the Higgs total waste and hence all the couplings. And we finally, finally show for the first time the Higgs precision fit for 125 G Mimion collider that can reach percent level Higgs width precision and also give you percent level Higgs coupling determination. And it has a very unique feature of determining the muon you cover at the sub percent level that no other collider can do. Okay, but that's not the focus of this part of discussion. And in fact, our study also showed that uh, to enable a resonant Higgs factory, you need to have 10 to the minus five beam energy control for the muon collider, which may not have one may not have. It's in fact a technical challenge for that. That's why the current proposals for future colliders choose 125 GeV as an optional stage. Uh, so if we don't have a, a 125 GeV uh, uh, resonant Higgs factory, would the muon collider be a reasonable Higgs factory? Okay. And that, that question is unknown. Okay. In fact, according to the plot I showed you earlier about the unclosed fit without the, the other inputs for hydrogen muon collider, it seemed to be a handicapped muon collider, uh, a Higgs factory for hydrogen muon collider. Okay. So the baseline is the following. At the muon collider at 10 TeV, the dominant production will be WW fusion. The sub-leading one will be ZZ fusion. I also have uh, associate production, et cetera. 
One can show I can measure various inclusive channel, exclusive channels at sub percent or percent level sensitivities. And also I can do a global fit. As I mentioned earlier, I cannot close the fit. In that sense, I cannot extract the absolute information about his count. Okay, but here we our ongoing study, our proposed to do an inclusive Higgs rate measurement from the ZZ fusion. Okay, this is a subleading channel. Counterintuitively, will give us the most important piece of information. That is because when I do ZZ fusion to the Higgs, I will have two forward muons. If I have a forward coverage up to rapidity of six, I can again measure the muon energy and subtract their form momentum for my initial energy and do the recoil mass calculation. The, due to momentum conservation, the recoil mass would give me a Higgs peak. I should be able to pick the Higgs, and this recoil mass does not rely on how the Higgs decays. I only tag the two forward energetic muons. Okay? So this enables the inclusive measurement of the Higgs production rate that is only dependent on the Higgs to ZZ coupling because I don't rely on the decay to any channel. So there's no branching fraction uh, 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 in this rate. Okay? So this inclusive rate is actually an important one. So the Higgs inclusion rate, inclusive rate is how the E plus E minus machines to break the degeneracy. And here I propose the Henry muon collider uses the ZZ fusion to break the degeneracy. Okay, so ideally I would have a recoil mass sharply peak at a Higgs mass, okay? But that's in our dream world. In fact, due to fine energy, energy evolution of such a TV object, any imprecision in their measurement, and also the beam energy uncertainty, uh, uh, resolution if a beam and, uh, energy a spread, I will have a spread of the reconstructed energy. So part on level, I will have a Higgs peak, but after reconstruction and the convolution with beam energy spread, I will have very broad spectrum. So it seems the idea will fail. Okay? I will not be able to do this inclusive measurement. In particular, sometimes I will even have space-like separation in the momentum, but that's another, uh, that's just a small issue. Okay, so what we show is Still, nevertheless, being a lepton collider, the background rate, even though I cannot reconstruct the Higgs peak, is still manageable. Manageable. Okay. So if there's a subtle effect you should uh, uh, from because you would anticipate bar bar background dominance, and we show we are careful treatment and uh, uh, the transverse uh, uh, PT cut uh, of the system. I can make it in a much well controlled region of a mu mu gamma rate. And you see the mu mu gamma background dominance, and then I have the mu mu to difermion, a pair of fermions dominance, and also diboson production. Recall that I rely on the forward tagging of the muons, and do, I don't rely on what's the other object in the final state. So I have to calculate the inclusive process of my background. And the Higgs signal is somewhere here. So the signal background ratio is about 10 to minus 2, which is quite manageable for lepton collider. That's the benefits of having uh, such a lepton machine. And without such a sharp recall mass peak, just by purely by race and the reconstruction, we can see that a hydrogen muon collider can measure such an inclusive rate that is critical to break the degeneracy at 4% level at 3 TV and the 0.75% at the 10 TV, which will enable an important result. That is no hydrogen muon collider is a full-fledged Higgs factory, which means it can measure all his properties very well, as well as any other future lifetime collider Higgs factories. So, and in fact, it will be even better. And what result we have is you will measure the Higgs weights at 2% level and all the Higgs couplings at the 0.5% level. This is a very surprising result, uh, given if you think about the collider phenomenology and how much background you have to come back with. Uh, and also, if you're a fitting expert, you know this result uh, is very special. Uh, generically, you expect this result to be 1%, and we show due to the strong decorrelation of the, the many channels is actually 0.5% level precision. So I really ran out of time. Uh, so I want to just quickly mention also the top view cover is interesting at the muon collider, which we have very poor sensitivity through the TTH process. However, we point out because Higgs unitized the WWTD bus scattering, 
the interference effect will be enable us to determine the Higgs pre, uh, uh, top Yukawa so, uh, with much better precision. We show we can determine it at 1.3% level, 1.5% level, comparable uh, uh, to the high lumi RC projection and much better than the TDX channel by a factor of 30. Okay, and also muon collider can measure Higgs self coupling and, and the multi Higgs production, uh, 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 even the quadric coupling at the outer one level. Okay, so I hope uh, uh, I really too. I'm too excited about it. I covered put too much information there, but I hope it conveys the uh, the excitement and also the overall physics picture of muon collider. It has unique physics capabilities in all those aspects. Higgs, dark matter, and general new physics. And it's a powerful machine for uh, uh, particle physics. I would call it the dream machine for future colliders. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot, Chen. Very interesting talk. So we have time for questions. Um, who would like to go first? Uh, yeah, Bruce, do you want to? So, so thank you for the talk. Um, can I just understand what what sort of detector you have in mind in these studies at the collision point? Is there the one detector or is there more than one detector? What at different collision points? What's the plan? Ah, so for all of my studies, I assume the one detector. I use the uh, the most uh, heuristic uh, and the current uh, current uh, uh, detector model that people people have uh, with uh, some small modifications. For the general physics discussion, the BS Higgs physics discussion, etc., I essentially assume the standard uh, muon collider detector, which have uh, uh, you know have uh, some veto region in the semi four region and have some central coverage. I rely on the central coverage. For the special cases, I rely on the for the muon tagging. I assume I imagine there's another sub detector in the uh, for uh, you know high rapidity regime uh, to tag the high energy muons. So, that so this is the question that that's the question that I was going to address yeah. for a for a central detector, and you're saying you've got coverage down to a rapidity of six. Rapidity of six is insanely forward. That's a fraction of a degree yeah. from the beam line. And this is in a context where there's substantial radiation coming from decays along the beam. I mean, we there have been a number of presentations on muon colliders recently in this forum and in others and some of those have stressed the the shielding that's required you know around the the accelerator insertion the collider insertions coming in at either end of the detector in order to stop the detector from being flooded by flooded by radiation from you know, from decays in the beam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. On its face, that would seem to be inconsistent with this sort of extremely forward detection program. I mean, ah. have there been discussions with detector design people about this sort of straw man, yeah. straw man detector that's being used? Yeah. Uh, so this is a very good point. Let me let me clarify. Okay, so for all of the study results, except for this final inclusive Higgs uh, study, the I only assume a very central detector. In fact, uh, for the model for the dissipation track, etc., I will require a rapidity of less than one point five. And for the general studies, I typically require rapidity uh, 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 sorry less than one point five, less than two point five. Only for this inclusive Higgs measurement, that is, the, without it, muon collider will be handicapped. So I demonstrate the uh, the physics case for such a forward detector. It's not to be meant to have a in, you know general coverage up to a repeat of six. I only demand uh, a, 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 a for the muon tagging device, which means I can measure how straight the line is. Uh, there's an energetic muon that uh, generically would penetrate the shielding area anyway. I can add another detector, muon uh, detector, trying to capture to see there's a high energetic muon. I, I'm only requiring a poor resolution for the mu energetic muon 
uh, tagging uh, device. And that, uh, that, that is, uh, uh, that is, in my opinion, seem to be possible, but uh, but uh, but uh, I think uh, that in pushes our experimental colleagues who are interested in forward detected development uh, to study those. But I think the physics contribution I'm making here is uh, uh, generically you will think the forward detector is technically challenging and not buying as much. What I point out here is for the Higgs physics of this Higgs precision program with that one will be an important added feature from Young Quadrat that enable it to close, uh, to be a standalone. Okay. So, so, so what, what's being foreseen is some sort of, some sort of distinct okay. forward tagging station related, sort of related to the forward physics program detectors of ATLAS and CMS that are at some distance from, that are at some distance from the main central detector. And that we uh, have to take somehow the beam optics into account and other such things. For it. That's that right. That's, uh, that's, not, a, that's definitely one possibility. Yeah. That that that's maybe not. Mm -hmm. That's not obviously impossible. But, yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the question. In fact, uh, I haven't talked to our detector colleagues uh, much. Our it's you know I will I believe this is the would be a leading motivation for a forward uh, uh, detector, and this uh, requirement is very manageable in some sense. I only want to see muons. I just want to make sure you give you tell me there's the energetic muon. Uh, give a very rough energy estimation. That will be sufficient uh, for me to enable this uh, physics for Higgs uh, uh, for Higgs precision. I'll be happy to discuss more about the detector possibilities. Uh, I think I think it's uh, it's quite exciting. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah. no, that's good. So I, I see that some people already had to leave because uh, of the time. How about uh, so I have a few more questions, but but how about we close the official parts?